sick and tired of hearing about all of the radicals and the perverts and the liberals and the leftists and the communists coming out of the closet. It's time for God's people to come out of the closet, out of the churches, and change America. We must do it. We've got to raise up an army. I don't want to wait no more. Let me propose something. Religion does no harm at all. Okay. Discuss. <laughs> uh, well, of course, you know, evidence of history and even contemporary events uh, refutes that. Um, Whatever. E yeah, even, even if we set aside, you know, the, the obvious war, conflict, violence uh, that has always plagued society and has gotten particularly worse under the Judeo-Christian religions, um, even if we set that aside, we have ordinary, everyday things that are going wrong. Uh, the sort of dehumanization and mistreatment of homosexuals, for example, is, is a prominent example, and it's getting worse in this country, actually. Uh, it was getting better for a while, but now there's this backlash, and that's, that's bad. That's bad for humanity, it's, and, and a religion that encourages that or even allows that is wrong. I uh, agree with capital punishment, and I believe that homosexuality is one of those that could be coupled with uh, murder and, and other sins. It would be the government that um, is, sits upon this land who would be executing the homosexuals. If certain fundamentalist Christians had their way, we would put gay people to death. And you know what? We should do that. We should strap them right to this gurney and lethally inject them. Because God does hate facts. The real question is why moderate Christians don't agree with God. Because when it comes to his rules, God is not a moderate. Don't you commit yourself to some political party or politician. You commit yourself to the principles of God and demand those parties and politicians align themselves with the eternal values in this book. And America will be forever the greatest nation on this earth. You ever notice what a bad rap the Inquisition gets? Even some Christians today think it was a bad idea. But how could it be a bad idea? If the Bible is right, aren't the stakes as high as they can be? If a little suffering here on earth saves more souls for all eternity, isn't that a good thing? The Inquisition was not a perversion of Christian doctrine. The Inquisition was an expression of Christian doctrine. It's interesting to me at great political rallies how you have a a Protestant to pray and a Catholic to pray and then you have a Jew to pray. With all due respect for those dear people, my friend, God Almighty does not hear the prayer of a Jew, for how in the world can God hear the prayer of a man who says Jesus Christ is not the true Messiah? You know what? He's right. Imagine if you killed your own child, like God did, and then the people you did it for didn't recognize your sacrifice. Of course you wouldn't hear their prayers. Mel Gibson was right to portray the Jews as evil. These must be the most despicable people on earth. Unless this book is wrong. And if this book is wrong, what the hell is moderate Christianity? Jesus was only sort of the Son of God? He only somewhat rose from the dead? Your eternal soul is at stake, but you shouldn't make a big deal out of it? Moderate Christianity makes no sense. Is it any wonder that so many people choose the Christian leaders who actually have the courage of their convictions? Many people imagine that uh, belief in, in the end of days and the, the idea that Jesus is in this generation likely to come down out of the clouds and save the day 
we imagine that this is not, this is a fringe conviction. It really isn't. The rapture is uh, described in the Bible in uh, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 4 verses 16 and 17 as being when Jesus Christ comes back to earth and takes up his church to heaven. And uh, the church is all the people that are believers in him and not uh, the buildings. 22% of Americans claim to be certain that Jesus is going to come back to earth and judge the living and the dead sometime in the next 50 years. Another 22% think he probably will. So that's 44% that's of the electorate who are basically convinced that he's coming back in their lifetime. Personally, I think it's going to happen within my lifetime. Um, I'm 47 now, and if I live a normal life, then that would be in the next 20 or 30 years. Now, when you unpack what that conviction entails, it, it is perfectly maladaptive to planning for a sustainable future for the, the human race. It's not. It's, it's, it's maladaptive, certainly, when it comes time to avoid global conflict, because by the by the lights of, of these prophecies, global conflict is actually the, the precursor to Jesus coming back. Hearing uh, different uh, Bible scholars saying the things that are going on in the, in the world today, um, pretty much everything has happened that the Bible said has to happen uh, before the return of Jesus Christ. So if it's all happened, we're pretty much uh, ready to go at any moment. It really is not an exaggeration to say that there is some significant percentage of the American electorate which, if they turned on their television today and saw that a, a mushroom cloud had replaced Jerusalem, uh, they would see a silver lining in that cloud. About six years ago, I, upon inspiration by God, I believe, I started a website called raptureletters.com. The website is provided for people that have spoken with their relatives and loved ones about the kingdom of heaven and uh, haven't been able to witness to them properly or they just weren't convinced of anything. So they can go on my website and put a name and an email address and the people will get sent a letter after the rapture takes place. The letter will uh, hopefully provide some comfort to uh, those people that receive it and uh, let them know that their loved ones are in heaven now and that uh, it also gives them a message and uh, allows them to uh, say a prayer to become uh, saved and hopefully uh, get into heaven themselves. Insofar as people like that elect our, our presidents and, and congressmen and insofar as they get elected as presidents and congressmen, that's a, a terribly dangerous state of affairs. You'll have someone make up a fake quote or misrepresent the document, misrepresent the evidence. Then they'll put it on a website or put it in a book that's published by pe what people think is a respectable publisher. And then hundreds, thousands of Christians will read this and believe it because they assume, well, this guy wouldn't lie. He wouldn't have made this stuff up. And so they go and repeat it. And so you get the lie repeated many times, mostly by people who aren't lying, who really do think it's true, but they just didn't check. 101 last day prophecies, just some of the things that are supposed to happen. Literal Babylon, uh, formerly called Babel, would re-emerge in the land of Shinar. The land of Shinar is known as modern day Iraq. And Saddam Hussein spent uh, over 20 years rebuilding um, literal Babylon. As a matter of fact, I heard he had Madonna come in to christen it. Faith really is a conversation stopper. If somebody says, it's my faith that, that, soul, that life is sacred and, and uh, God creates life and man should not meddle in it, and that really stops the conversation. There's no, you, you can't challenge someone further and treat them uh, as though they're drawing their ethics out of the Iliad and the Odyssey, which is really what I think we should be able to do. When, when, when the President of the United States says, I, I plan to appoint common sense judges who know that our rights are derived from God, I think someone in the White House press corps should be able to stand up and say, how is that different from thinking you're going to appoint